A disclaimer, this video covers a few advanced processes of espresso brewing. If you want to see a video covering just the basics, let me know and I will put it on my list of videos to make. Plain espresso should taste good. If it doesn't, that means something is wrong. You should not suffer while drinking espresso like you would a shot of cheap alcohol. Great espresso isn't bitter, it isn't sour. It should be sweet and fruity, but it's hard to get espresso to taste like this. You have to start with tasty coffee beans, and in order to get good results every time, we have to develop a system of decisions for how to brew espresso. So I'm making this video to explain more broadly how I make espresso, and why I do what I do. I also have a list of videos and articles after you finish mine, so check them out in the description. This is a short video series in three parts. The first describes a theory of espresso extraction. The second reviews the inputs and factors of espresso brewing, and the third goes through pulling a shot. I'm going to cover a lot of material here because brewing espresso can be complicated. You don't have to get it right away. It's YouTube, so you can watch again or pause. First, I will define how I like to use the terms input and factor. To make better espresso, you have to control each of its inputs. And by inputs, I mean the settings you choose, like grind setting or espresso dose. Each of these inputs affects important factors about espresso. These factors include things like grind distribution and puck preparation. To restate, when I'm talking about an input, I'm talking about a chosen setting. And when I'm talking about a factor, I'm talking about what that input affects. Unfortunately, you can't directly control factors. As an example, think of how the temperature setting on a machine affects the temperature of water as it moves through espresso grinds, but not completely. What you can change is the heat setting, but what matters is the temperature of the water while you're pulling a shot. I'm going to talk about espresso using the terms inputs and factors, so I can describe how what you change and the effect that change has are not always correlated one to one. Thinking of them as inputs you control and factors you can't control keeps my thoughts organized. The main problem beginners experience when brewing espresso is espresso factors are sensitive to small variations, and each change you make has big, confusing effects. The skill of making good espresso is in making minute adjustments while keeping many factors under control to improve the output. Even with entry-level machines, you can influence many inputs, but what to change when brewing espresso isn't always obvious. My approach is to make limited changes after pulling each shot in an effort to intentionally move towards something I like. It helps to keep most of the inputs fixed while allowing a smaller subset of them to change. Usually the inputs we change are the one or two on which we have the greatest control and which have the most predictable effect on water flow and extraction. Espresso is a concentrated beverage made from finely ground coffee beans. In fact, espresso has many times the portion of dissolved solids as drip coffee, which a lot of people already think tastes pretty strong. All of this is possible because of the fundamental difference in espresso from other styles of brewing pressure. Espresso is extracted at pressure, which helps increase the flow of water despite a really fine grind that would normally clog with just gravity pulling. Extraction is a factor, and when brewing espresso, we want an even flow of water across as much surface area of coffee particles as possible. To get an effective image of extraction in your head, let's think of a simpler related model. Say you wanted to quickly wash dry red beans in a colander to remove the dust that comes from the factory. If you simply pour water over the top of them, it will find the path of least resistance, with most of the surfaces kept dry. This is just like how a river will carve a deep canyon rather than evenly coat the ground. So to clean your beans everywhere, you might spread the water more evenly over the top, increase the pressure, and flick them to pull the water down. Turns out, your espresso machine has features that do the same things. In an espresso machine, there is a shower that spreads hot water over the coffee, an electric pump that forces water through the fine grind, and a precision-engineered portafilter with holes that encourage even flow. The machine's design has done a lot of the work for you. It's up to you to improve extraction with good technique. If you apply the weird bean colander model to an espresso shot, you might deduce some sources of improvement. It seems important that all of the coffee forms a flat bed that reaches an even distance above the bottom of the portafilter. This intuition is reinforced by Darcy's Law, an equation that describes water flowing through a resistive medium. 
Don't worry if you aren't comfortable with an equation like this, but here it is for those who are. Q equals Ka times Pb minus Pa over mu L, where the variable Q is the flow of the fluid, K is the permeability of the medium, A is the area at the cross section, Pb minus Pa is the total pressure drop between pump and atmosphere, mu is the viscosity, and L is the length the fluid has to flow through. It's important that L inversely affects Q. Where a coffee puck is thicker, the flow is proportionally slower. It's not too far a stretch to predict that if the bed varies in thickness, it's likely to flow fastest where it's shallowest and slowest where it's thickest. Also, the permeability of your medium increases flow as well, which helps illustrate why a coarser grind has a faster flow. Now, the next main concepts to review are erosion and channeling, which can be thought of as changes in K over time. Often, where there's a trickle of water flowing, it will bring the smallest coffee particles down the coffee puck towards the bottom, where they'll get caught and increase resistance. You might have observed this while brewing filter coffee. By the end, many small particles have found their way to the paper and water flows much slower. At the same time, the fastest flowing paths through the coffee puck remove material and make it even easier for water to flow. These effects are the main enemy to high quality extractions. Where water flows slowly now, it will flow slower in the future. When water finds an easy route, it follows it and quickly erodes a valley. To avoid this inconsistency, I use good puck preparation. This should be enough to help you understand how flow is important in espresso brewing. The next video covers what you have under your control to affect the best flow and produce the tastiest shot of espresso. Before that, please let me know if you're enjoying the video by pressing thumbs up or down and consider subscribing.